السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام على من اتبع الهدى Peace of Allah be upon those who follow His guidance and those who are not upon His guidance may He guide them Amin Today inshallah uh, with the permission of God I will be speaking about a very important issue about Kurt uh, Western, Western God that he what he has done now there are four points which i'm going to speak today in this video and please please watch this video till the end and the implication and the conclusion is left to you all don't feel anything bad don't think that it is you know uh, cursing anybody or refuting anybody it's just what we as muslims feel about this cartoonist and what they are now and how their position is, that is what I'm going to speak in my few words. Let's go to the four points. Today I will be speaking about the first point, which is that what does Kurt Westergaard, uh, who does Westergaard's cartoon resemble? So now this is a question to all of you. Who does Kurt Westergaard's cartoon resemble? Now, Wester, uh, Westergaard has drawn the cartoon according to his assumption that he has drawn the cartoon of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now for him, he has to reborn again to de de draw the picture of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because nobody has seen him and nobody knows how he actually looks like. But I want you to draw your attention over here. Please pay attention and compare the forehead of uh, Western Guards and the turban that is there. If, if you just remove the turban on that picture, you will see that the forehead is not of the forehead of Muhammad Sallallahu but it is the forehead of this gentleman who has gone to his final destination. Allah knows where he has gone. Now see his eyes. Instead of that brownish and the blunt color of eyebrows, if you take that black paint and paint his eyebrows, you will see that his eyes are looking same like that picture. Generally now, you can see mustache, compare the mustache of the picture he has drawn. You can see the beard, then compare the beard on the picture that he has drawn. And if you remove the turban, you can compare his, even his long ears, three, four, five inches ears as well. Now, all this thing you can see and automatically, even the one who does not know Western Guards and doesn't know Rasul and doesn't know who is in the picture and somebody even to the small ch child who is studying in the school and uh, he likes the painting, he will say that this man, uh, the man that is Western Guard, has done his sketch in that cartoon. Okay, now let's go to the next point. Let's go to the next point. Now. These people, Mr. West, uh, Westergaard and our brother, Dr. David Wood, and his uh, new uh, converter to Christianity, who has been baptized by him behind the curtain, uh, a apostate prophet and known as a Ridwan, Kurdish, uh, born non-Muslim, claimed to be Muslim, then he became non-Muslim. He wasn't Muslim in the first place. They give this reason. They give this reason and they tell us the reason why we make mockery of Muhammad Sallallahu and now we are representing as Muslims be representing Muhammad Sallallahu So making a mockery of us, how they're justifying it, let's see that. It is said that I'll get you the reference as well and I'll get you the evidence for what I'm saying. M Mr. Westergaard's gone to his final destination and uh, David Wood also will be his successor, and maybe Ridwan also, maybe next. I don't know who will be the next, immediate next. So here they say, we insult you, referring to Muslims, because we love you. We insult you by mocking, by mocking Muhammad Sazam and making his cartoon and talking ill about you, is to, the uh, reason is that we love you and also want to include you into our society. So in other words, if I understand this, what they are saying is that this is the society who is the society of the cartoonist. All of them are cartoonists. 
what <laughs> how they draw the cartoon is they look their pictures so many times on the mirror and they have nobody else to make a fun of that so they just pick up the name of somebody and then they draw and they say okay this is you know just to pick on somebody so they this culture this society is a funniest society with, with the thousands infinite number of funny characters and cartoons cartoons who make their own cartoons and then they are asking us and justifying that they are saying that we love you that's why we make more curry of you and we want you to we want to include you in our funniest and cartoonist and cartoon like society the funniest and joker society <laughs> let's see now read that listen to that what they say i'll bring you the proof i won't say anything from myself But there's a huge misunderstanding here. Our democratic traditions. But there's a huge misunderstanding here. When Muslims see someone mock their prophet, they think that they're being attacked or oppressed or excluded. Westergaard saw things quite differently. When we satirize Muslim fellow countrymen, this is not an act, an act of exclusion, but rather inclusion in Danish society, consistent with the way we satirize Danes in general. When we make fun of Muhammad, we're treating Muslims like we treat everyone else, because we make fun of things in Western society. Westerners who try to protect Muhammad from criticism are the ones who are telling Muslims you're not really part of what's going on here. When we make fun of Muhammad, we're telling Muslims, we expect you to live by the same rules that the rest of us live by. We expect you to be civilized because we all have to be civilized if civilization is going to work. When politicians and journalists insist that Muhammad is off limits, they're not honoring or respecting Muslims. They're accusing Muslims of being barbarians who are incapable of living by the same rules as everyone else. It's called the soft bigotry of low expectations. Politicians and journalists try to shield Muhammad because they don't think that his followers are able to function like normal people. Okay, now see, first of all, he's saying that he is who are making us feel that we have to live like, you know, a normal civilized people. So their civilization teaches them to make mockery of the people. They civilize, uh, their civilization is teaching them to make joke of us. But if you see, uh, uh, I don't know which year that man was giving a talk, uh, Western God, if you see his own image, which he is addressing millions, maybe watching him at that time, those he is cartoon himself look he can't even comb his hair and the way he is dug down to you know that a uh, way he is reading it, it clearly shows that he himself is making a mockery of himself and he is saying that this is what we want muslims to realize that we want to we are not making fun of you for that reason actually we love you and we want to invite you to the civilized you know uh, society and they, listen to them. Now listen for, for, for an example. If these people are saying that, you know, making a cartoon and talking about that and he's saying that this is in the society is allowed and all that. Imagine, imagine if, which is, we don't actually, actually allow this. We don't accept it. I do respect David. I do respect Western God, whatever he is. If somebody becomes a donkey, I don't have to be a donkey. If somebody becomes, you know, a chimpanzee or King Kong or Hong Kong, I don't have to be like that. So Alhamdulillah, I know who I am. So I, have, I know my limitation. But imagine if this cartoonist, if we make the cartoon of these people, like a head of, uh, you know, uh, David Wood and the head of uh, Western Guards, if we put their heads and underneath, if we put, you know, uh, the body of an animal who is, you know, licking somebody's private part. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. I ask Allah's forgiveness. But imagine, and if we draw that, so these civilized people will say, okay, <laughs> that's all right. The same thing if we 
take out their pictures and we put the pictures of their mothers. Astaghfirullah. We respect our mothers. We respect mothers of everybody. But I'm saying that, will that be acceptable? No. Can I say that? No. Can I say, I take the picture of, you know, uh, David Wood's father, his head, and as uh, Western Guard's mother's picture, and I bring their heads like this, and at the bottom, they are naked and they are having sex with each other. Will David Wood agree with that? It's a, it's a cartoon. But no, th this, is, this is something we as honorable people who, digni who have their own self-dignity and respect for their women will never do that. Even though it could be a civilized culture according to this man, no. And or vice versa, if I bring, you know, uh, the photo of David Wood's mother here and stay, stay, stay Westergaard's photo, and then I have a bottom where David uh, Westergaard is having sex with David Wood's mother. Astaghfirullah. I ask Allah to forgive me. But I just want you people to know that this is a civilization. Can I justify myself? Oh, David Wood. I love you. I love your mother. That's why I want you to feel that I am not different than you. You can say anything about my prophet, so I can also say anything about your mother and save God. So this is, this is, no, no, we are respectful people. We are more civilized than them. We know, we know, we don't believe in mockery of anybody. And to know for that, we have a Quran, which is in chapter 49. Quran has told Muslims and even the people who were living with Muslims in Medina, Quran has made a rule and restrictions that no man is allowed to make a mockery of any other Muslim, any other person. That's our religion. Surah Al-Hujrat, Chapter 49. Quran says that, Subhanallah, that we are not allowed. We are civilized people, man. We taught you. How to clean yourself. Don't tell us that you want us to be in your civilized uh, culture. You people have, you have civilization, but your civilization, uh, Nietzsche Jao, maybe 8, 9, I don't know, the I number, but it is, it is in Surah Hujrat. Upa Jao, thoda. Or Upa Jao, or Upa, or Upa Jao, or Upa Jao, or Upa. Or, 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 nay. Yeah, okay. Look what it says. Chapter 49, verse 11. Now, this is our civilization. I invite you that I will never draw the picture of your mother. You know, having sex with uh, Steve uh, Westergaard or his mother having sex with you. No, I will not do that because we are civilized. We follow this. We are not contradicting even the Bible, which you people are contradicting the teaching of your own faith. Look, it says, Ya ladina amanu la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa an yakunu khayram minhum wa la nisa'um min nisa'in asa an yakunna khayram minhunna wa la talmizu anfusakum wa la tanabazu bil alqab Oh, you who have believed, civilized Muslims, let not a people ridicule another people, uncivilized people, and people who are saying that we are, you know, highly sophisticated and we are very, you know, open and free, we have freedom of speech. These people should not ridiculize one another. Perhaps they may be better than one, uh, them. Better than them. Not let women ridicule other women. Perhaps, yeah, in other words, it is fun or making a mockery. This is what Quran is saying. That no, let no, not a people uh, make a mockery of another person. Perhaps they be, may be better than them. This is very clear. That you people are making mockery of ourselves. That shows that we are better than you people. Yes. And then what it says. Not let women ridicule another other women like our Muslim women. They have they dress properly like the Christian, uh, the nuns wear. We are you know we are not different than them. But nobody makes the mockery of them. But they do make the mockery of Muslims. So Quran says even you as Muslim women should not make the mockery of these civilized women. 
not nor let women ridicule other women. Perhaps they may be better than them. And do not insult one another. And do not call each other by offensive nicknames. Rest, rest is the name uh, that is mentioned of dis disobedience, uh, obedience after one's faith. And whoever, and whoever does not repent, then it is those who are wrongdoers. So I invite you to my civilization. I invite you, both of you, he's gone, but I invite you to my civilization and I want you to accept this verse because this verse will at, at least make you decent to your mother. At least it will make you decent to your family. So now these people has told us ex actually that they are making fun of us. This is because they love us. But we love you, but we will never make fun of you because our Quran teaches us to respect you. You may be naked, you may be fully clothed, we don't care, but we will do, we'll do respect you because we believe in Allah and we believe in His revelation and He says us to respect you. Now let's go to the third point. Now the third point is, does absolute freedom of speech exist? Now this is again the question. Speech, freedom of speech, freedom of speech, we can say anything. Okay, maybe sometimes somebody will watch my video and then, then they will make a video of uh, the pictures of David Wood naked and David, uh, Mr. Westergaard naked and having sex because they also might be believing in, you know, <laughs> LGBT. Uh, so let's see now. So, but now the question is, the freedom of speech, does it actually exist now? In the society, civilized society of David Wood and Westergaard? Let's see now. That hypocrisy is disclosed here. There are claims made by some liberal and secular ideological extremists that the defamatory cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad are about freedom of speech and freedom to insult. And they generally maintain that we must allow defamation, we must allow degradation, and we must allow gratuitous insult. Because it's all about preserving the right to express oneself, including liberty of thought. However, this is grossly misleading and it is simply not true. Why? Because there is no such thing as absolute freedom of speech. I repeat, there is no such thing as absolute freedom of speech. Every society on this planet has limitations and restrictions on speech, and these restrictions occur because of a competition of values. Now, in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, David Van Mill, an academic, he highlights this point. He says, the first thing to note in any sensible discussion of freedom of speech is that it will have to be limited. Every society places some limits on the exercise of speech, because it always takes place within a context of competing values, which we'll discuss in a moment. And there are many examples in law and public life that I want to bring to light in order to show you that there are restrictions on speech. Take France as an example. The French criminal code punishes outrage, grave insult, of the national anthem or tricolor flag. Now, think about the hypocrisy here. You have the secular and liberal ideologues claiming that the defamatory cartoons of the Prophet ﷺ are about freedom of speech. And that includes freedom to insult. But when it comes to insulting the flag and the anthem, then it's, you know, you can't do that. You must be criminally punished. It was the outrage concerning these laws. Another example is the political cartoonist Maurice Sine. He worked for the French satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo for 20 years and he was fired in 2009. Why? Because he drew some cartoons. Cartoons mocking the relationship of the former French president Sarkozy's son with a wealthy Jewish woman. Another example is in law. A French court injunction banned a, genus, uh, sorry, a Jesus based clothing advert mimicking Da Vinci's Last Supper. A French judge ruled that the display was a gratuitous and aggressive act of intrusion on people's innermost beliefs. In 2005, Danish newspaper Jillens posted and published caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad but rejected the publications of cartoons 
mocking Jesus alayhi salam, upon whom be peace, because they would provoke an uproar. And there are many more other examples. Now, in many other countries, including France, there are defamation laws, product defamation laws, hate speech laws, libel laws, laws against the Holocaust denial, and so on and so forth. So, it must be made very clear that this has nothing to do with freedom of speech in an absolute sense. This doesn't even exist in academic discourse, generally speaking. It's, a, it's not a very robust idea. It's an incoherent idea. And the reason it's incoherent, because people appreciate that there are other values in society that are going to be used to put restrictions on speech. Okay, so I think the mic was off. Let me tell you. Let me tell you briefly about this young man. This young man, he is originally Greek. And God has shown him the light. He accepted Islam. And after accepting Islam, this young man, because of his, mashallah, the intelligence that he had, an academic education and experience that he has, he has shut down the mouth of all the academics in the Europe. Nobody has the goods to stand in front of him and answer his arguments on academic basis where any issue, whether it is you know, racism, whether it is extremism, whether it is atheism, whether it is ism or thism, this, anything. And one of this, he has also now, you have, he has proven that nobody can deny because he's quoting from an academic scholars and academic teachers who are saying that freedom of speech is limited. It is limited. There are certain things you can say and certain things you cannot say. And if you say this or that, then you and he has given three examples, which I'm bringing you through the media sources where he is reading from. Let's go to it. This one, he was talking about that academic scholar, and that is a Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. There he says in the introduction, and it is in the uh, sixth line, the first thing, now, this is, you have to read what Hamza has read. You'll read the, here as well. The first thing to note, the first thing to note in any sensible discussion of freedom of speech is that it will have to be limited, not unlimited, which means you can't say anything you want. You can't say everything you want. You have to choose, pick and choose, and you have to see who is going to screw you. So you have to be careful. It's all limited. It's not unlimited. And then the examples are there. Some people try to go beyond their limits. They have been screwed and they have been done, you know, so bad to them, which I don't want to discuss. That's a political issue. I'm not a political person. So I will always ed educate people with this, especially the Dr. David Wood in America, the most civilized country. And he is one of those civilized citizens of that. The first thing to note in any sensible discussion of freedom of speech is that it will have to be limited. Le look, there's no absolute freedom of speech. It has to be limited. Every society places some limits on the exercise of speech of freedom because it always takes place within a context of competing values. So they have the values, and based on that, you can't pick and choose anybody and just say anything. You can't even pick any media. You can't pick any person. You can't pick any country. You can't pick any picture of somebody. You can't do anything like that. And look, the example. Example of this person. In France, this is a civilized country. I think, uh, David Wood, you should migrate to France, you know then you'll know that you are better in a, that civilized country. French faced jail, one of the journalists, okay? One of the person who was, you know, believing in the freedom of speech, he was jailed in France. Originally, he's French, and he was jailed in France for insulting what? Any president? 
any uh, king, queen, any religion? No, just the flag of the country. And this is where the example of Hamza Zazis has explained to you. This is BBC, where I am. I'm proud to be the citizen of United, Ara United Kingdom. And look what BBC has done. BBC host replaced after joke about UK flag. Now, these were the two hosts, and they were hosting, and they just made a, you know, certain com uh, comments on uh, the British flag. They have been replaced for a certain time. I don't know. So now I still see them sometimes coming up. But at the, that particular time, if it was a freedom of speech, why these two academic uh, journalists, open-minded, from a civilized country and, uh, you know, a brother of uh, David Wood's uh, country. So how come this is, where is the freedom of speech here? And why they have done that way? Why they have to be replaced with other hosts? You have to ask yourself. Where is the reality? Where is the freedom of speech absolutely existing? It's a hypocrisy. French cartoonist Sine, on trial of charges of anti-Semitism over uh, Sarkozy jibe. Now this is, uh, he's a son of a president, uh, you know, the Jean Sarkozy, the son of the French president. He was, uh, you know, uh, Maurice Sinet, 80, who works under the pen name Sine, or Sine uh, faces charges of inciting racial hatred for a column he wrote the last July in the satirical weekly Charlie Hebdo. The piece sparked a summer slanging match among the Parisian intelligentsia and ended his dismissal from the magazine. Where is the freedom of speech here? Why? What happened? Look, the French cartoonist Sine on trial on charges for anti-Semitism over Sarkozy jibe. Why? There's no freedom. Look at, you can see that if you click on this, French court banned Jesus Edward. Now we're coming to the religious point of view. Let's see now. People, they made, now this is again from BBC News. You can check it there. People, they were advertising the, and they were bringing in the advertisement, uh, the Last Supper of Jesus. And this is what they have done. But the France Catholic Church has won a court. Okay, injection to ban a clothing advertisement based on Leonardo de Vinci Church's uh, Last Supper. The display was ruled a gracious, uh, yeah, gracious, an aggressive act of intrusion of people's innermost belief beliefs by a judge. Imagine. Now that is, you know, something they took it personal. And this is about the Jesus. They don't like it. And the judge is involved. The country is involved. And the whole Edward is banned. Why? Where is the freedom of speech? If you can make a mockery of Muhammad, you think because Muslims are weak, you can suppress them and you can do anything. Otherwise, you'll deport these, uh, you know, so-called Muslims in your country, surviving on your pounds and surviving on your benefits. They will not say anything and they can. Otherwise, they'll be kicked out and deported to their original countries. No, don't think like that. We respect Jesus. We respect Muhammad. We respect Islam. We respect the beliefs of the Christianity. We have nothing because we are from civilized people, civilized culture, and we are from the civilization that is taught to us the, in the Quran. Quran has come to establish the proper civilization. And in that it says, no fun for Jesus, no fun Moses for Moses, no fun for Muhammad, no fun for the Jews, no fun for the Christians, no fun for the Muslims, no fun for the Buddhists, no fun even the naked naturist people. We have nothing to do with them. No fun for the LGBT, gay or lesbian. We don't care. They, uh, they can be anything they want. This is what our religion teaches us. But look, this is hypocrisy, very clearly mentioned. Another example read by our brother, uh, this young man, uh, Hamza Zussis. He said this Danish paper rejected Jesus cartoons. Then Danish, Danish people, your Danish uh, cartoonist, uh, Wester Gads, Wester Gads, he is Danish. He is from Denmark. And he did that. 
then why didn't you ban that uh, cartoon of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I know you didn't want to ban it. Reason, reason, because you people are surviving. You will not get enough, you know, food to survive to eat without doing those kind of things because then you want to get the views. You want to get uh, viewers. You want to get the points. You want to get their ranks. And because of that, your news will run. People will buy. People will watch. You'll get money to, you know, survive. And that's why you pick on such kind of things. But when it comes to, but actually, I'll tell you, it's good. It's good that you have published that uh, Western Guards, you know, cartoon of Prophet Muhammad, because I can teach my children that Western Guards has made his own sketch. Because when they will ask me, that is this, uh, this is Muhammad. I said, Beta, I, I don't know, because we have not seen Muhammad like this. But we can see somebody, is, uh, you know, next to him. He looks quite 99.9% .9 like him. If you paint him, you know, his hair into black, then you will find that it is him. Now you see, search on Google or you search on YouTube. You search on YouTube and just type like that heading, freedom of speech, hypocrisy. And you'll get, look, how many videos you'll get. And this is all shows that there is no absolute freedom of speech. Unlimited, no. It is limited and it is picking and choosing. And why? Because they want to survive. So we, you should be grateful to us. You are not making fun of us. We are giving you food to live. We are giving you food to survive. Otherwise, you will die in the street like, you know, creatures are dying in the street. So you are surviving through us. Let's see now who is truly elevated. Who is truly elevated uh, versus who is truly degraded. Let's see. Alhamdulillah. This Quran, it is chapter 15, and it's, uh, it's called Surah Al-Hijr. And the verse is 95. Same type of people, same type of uh, Western guards, and David Wood, and AP, apostate prophet. Somebody calls him a puss, which I don't like it. Alhamdulillah. So, because he's Ridwan, okay? Uh, no, never Muslim. Never Muslim. So this person, these three cartoons, uh, sorry, car cartoonist. Did I say cartoon? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to call them cartoon. I just want to say cartoonist because they do. So this uh, cartoonist, why they're cartoonists? Because they're drawing cartoons. Okay. And what are they drawing? They're drawing themselves. So they are cartoons. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. The Quran says this uh, in Surah Al-Hijr, chapter 15, verse 95, to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look, elevation. And degradation. Look, inna kafayna kal mustahzi'in. O Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the praised worthy, the most praised one, the most praised one, the most cartoonist Western God, gone, finished. Nobody will remember him after two days. I can see the, the news rank has gone down after the next day. Maybe few of them, red and few of them now is gone. David Wood, you will be the next, you will be lost, you will be gone in the different world. Uh, AP, you will also be gone. But look, 1500 years ago, this man was been mocked by the Arabs. Arab is gone now. Those Arabs are gone. But now you can see this Muhammad is still existing today in our hearts. We have a chapter called Surah al Duha. We have a chapter called, chapter called in Sharah. And in that, if you read, these are few verses. I'll take you, just show the chapter, uh, take the chapter number. Surah Al-Sharah. Sharah Al-Ikdo, in ko nikal do. Yeah. Look, this is uh, chapter 94. And see, it says, أَلَمْ نَشْحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكَ وَوَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وِزْرَكَ الَّذِي أَنْقَضَ ظَهْرَكَ وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ We have elevated to, there is no limit. We have elevated your name, your remembrance, your memory. 1400 years he was known there, before 14 years till today, he is remembered 24-7 globally. 
he is remembered 24 7 globally what is that we muslims pray five times a day we muslims pray five times a day that is called our prayers alhamdulillah and these prayers are you know before we pray any particular prayer we have a call to prayer and that call to prayer yeah i know because there is a call to relief which is david wood would always go there because he gets that call and we get another call we get the call to prayer so david wood will go to toilet and we will go to our mosque so the call to prayer says ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah I witness that we witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of Allah. Muhammad, Rasulullah. Muhammad is mentioned. Steve God and Western God and David Wood. You will be gone. You will be perished. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is saying, "We will protect you from these mockers, and your name will be saved." And look, Allah Dina ya jaluna ma Allahi ilahan akhir. These people are worshiping other than Allah, and so far, Alamun soon they will know. And this is how 1400 years ago they made the mockery. Now nobody knows about them. But Prophet Muhammad says, "I'm still is 24/7. This call to prayer is known. 24/7, the call to prayer is saying." Come to the salah. Come to the you know success. Come to the prayer. Why? Because when you witness that there is no god to be worshipped except Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. So now you decide, my brothers and sisters, the civilized people of David Wood's culture. You decide who is elevated, the truly elevated versus the truly degraded. I say Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Regardless of these degraded people, he is elevated, and these people are degraded. In the past, they are being degraded here now, and in the future also the same. This is what I wanted to mention. Now, my brothers and sisters, don't get upset if you get angry. Name by this one a cup like this with your name that will give you that will calm you down. This is the gift from my two daughters on Eid, and it says A for Abdul, and it says. Ask anything about Islam. So, David Wood, I ask you that you listen to this video, and all the Muslims and non-Muslims, please listen to this video, and then tell me if the freedom of speech, if I have justified to this subject, then forward it to as many people as you can. And if you think I have said something wrong, then okay, censor me. Then I will say my video has won the case because. You can't censor me. I'm just giving you the evidence, and this is nothing but I'm expressing from a civilized perspective of Islam, civilized perspective of Quran, civilized perspective of teaching of Prophet Muhammad for 20 years, 23 years, who changed the civilization of the wild nomads into a well-civilized people today. Till today, until the end of time, this civilization is from this uh, uh, legendary man Muhammad. We are from that, and we just want to tell you that this is our civilization, and I welcome all of you to this. Except my civilization, or except David Wood's civilization, where they make the fun of the, um, themselves and they want to show the love by making fun of others. This is the civilization they have, and they think that they want to survive. And they are surviving by making, you know, famous names of famous people to make themselves famous. They will not be known. Westergaard would be not known even when he was existing. Nobody knew. But in 1980s, when he started making the cartoons, he was dreaming at night. Whose cartoon should I be making? And definitely he was dreaming himself, nightmare of himself. So he started making the cartoons of himself. And you can see his shape. I can show you. I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, a sportsman. I can say that this man, in his shape, you can say that how does it look? If you remove his clothes and put his head, you will know who is actually the cartoon. Looks like cartoon, and he has made his own sketch. So this is what we say. I welcome all of you, my brothers and sisters. This is the freedom of speech which I have used that right, but your culture is hypocrite in that sense that they don't have you know absolute free freedom for free speech they have a limited thing and this will prove my video will prove 
what you are believing and what you don't believe. If you censor my video, then it shows that there is no, there's a limitation to the freedom of speech. And if you forward it, then I'll say you have done a great job. But meantime, please buy such kind of a cup and have a coffee or drink so that will calm you down. Until next time, with the protection of God, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر لمن كان يرجو الله